Hey, 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 Superior Shea fan, Learner Humans, how are you doing today? This one goes out to Leaf River, Illinois. Leaf River, Illinois, I am honing your Barbarossa that you've purchased from the SuperiorShave.com. This is a shortened blade, 5 8 with no shoulder. To take over most of the incumbent bevel, I have these strips of convex wood, as you can see. It is quite convex. The shape down this way is six and a half feet, and there's a teeny tiny bit of convexity going across it that way, 25 feet. They are one inch wide. This one is eight inches long. The other two are six inches long. And this is 3M lapping film with adhesive that's been glued onto this block. I got my trusty ballastol oil. And I'm going to start by putting some oil directly on the razor. <laughs> now in the previous video using these, I was showing you the way to cut your hand, just because it looks better on video. But honestly, the easiest way to do it with these little strips of wood with lapping film is just to rub it like that. Now, you don't have to rub this way because the razor doesn't know the difference in terms of taking a bevel that was there and replacing it with this more concave one. Look how quickly you see the swarf on there, and is that showing up? I sure do hate the lighting in this office. If my dream comes true and next year I can have a shed, a shed of depression in the back of my house to film and package orders and hone razors, I'll make sure the lighting is a lot better distributed than this little 200 square foot office which just has one big old light that's way too bright and not well distributed and everything else is deep shadows. Okay, well, I'll put some more ballastol on there. You don't want to stay long at this 600 grit because once it gets to the actual bevel itself, like, one, sorry, once it, once it gets to the apex of the razor, it'll start leaving potholes in the finished edge. But you want to be on there just long enough for it to take over the rear of the shoulder of the bevel, the side of the bevel that's closest to the... Um, to the spine. That's ample on that coarse one. I'm just going to take a paper towel. Look how much swarf came off that time. Well, you can see it there, can't you? That's it. You can use that thing dozens and dozens and dozens of times before the lapping film will wear out with these diamonds and these typical Rockwell 60 straight razor steels that are the modern era. Now we're going to use the 1000 grit one. This is fine enough to take it all the way to the edge. And you can actually hear the difference. Look at that. Whoa, Nelly.
I've ordered some bass wood blocks, three by three by eight, and when they get here, they're being produced somewhere in Minnesota. When they get here, I will shape them to my concave lapping plate that's unique to me and you can buy them you know you're gonna have to pay for the block of wood and the shipping to you and the labor especially that damn labor because every time I shape them it gets more and more annoying but it's not like it's really hard I mean you can shape the 3x3 black gas wood with some good sandpaper and uh, about a half hour of your undivided attention is all it takes to shape it to like this Here's a balsa wood that's 10 inches long and shaped to the 2 meter form. Alrighty then, enough of the 1000 grit. Let's polish it off with the 1250 and then we will go for the transition to the finer stones. At this point I want to be very thorough in making sure that I've really overtaken that bubble. because the factory straight razors from anybody in the Western world can take a lot more concavity than the straight razor makers are putting into the razors. Why aren't they putting that concavity in the razors? Because it costs time. They don't have a wheel as small a diameter as I'm using that's fine enough. Uh, when I went to see a scissor manufacturer that does scissors only in Solingen. This was, uh, was this seven years ago. They had a grinding wheel that was about five foot diameter, but it wasn't fine enough to be working on a straight razor edge. It's fine enough for a, a scissor, which is doesn't require as fine a bevel and the steel is softer. But for straight razors, it would have left big old gouges that you'd have to take out later. For those of you into the stupid stories of the Superior Shave, I have went ahead and paid a whopping 1700 US dollars to prototype a permanently shaped diamond stone from China. It would be a mold. You had to pay for two molds. A mold of a base of rubber. Just a second, let me go get a finer stone. All right, Superior Shave fans and other humans, we have one of the convex cautical boos that are available for sale on the superiorshave.com. This one is shaped to the same shape as those wooden blocks going down this way and then the same shape as those wooden blocks on that axis going this way. But what's cool about the booze is this is your axis for six and a half foot which would mean that this is your axis for 25 feet but you have this other axis that you can align. You can align this, the, the, the toe of the razor to go this way which is sort of in the middle. If it was, if you're going exactly that way, that's the longest diameter on the stone. But if you're going like this, you can cut ever so slightly behind the bevel with a shorter diameter. But we're going to use the six and a half foot. I believe that the codicles at their coarsest are significantly finer than even that 1.5 micron rated lapping film. And we're going to use my little rubbing stone here to put the teeniest bit of slurry on there. And here we go. Boy, you know, in this office, one little mosquito. It's like a sniper. That Remember the sniper that uh, they made that whole movie with Jude Law? The one Russian sniper that was somewhere that they couldn't get to? One mosquito is all it takes in a room to be a little rat bastard that is... Sniping you off. I don't have the close-up vision to target and kill him. So I can either blast a big old office fan 
and then the video doesn't sound good, but he cannot compete with the wind of the office fan, or the little fucker just sits here and tags me. Anyway, where was I? Yes, so the Chinese innovators are charging me 1700 bucks to prototype and mail me three pieces of the prototype. And it will be a molded a molded piece of metal and a molded rubber base for the metal. The piece of metal on the top, they are actually getting the properties of metal hot enough, I suppose, to pour into a mold. And then that would be the idea of the finished product as opposed to CNC machining, which would be quite expensive. I didn't know you could mold like hot metal. Anyway, what do I know? I'm not, I'm not producing it. I'm just designing the idea. But the idea will be a two and a half millimeter thick piece of molded metal that's got electroplated thousand grit diamonds across its surface. And it will be holding on to a little rubber base that is shaped as the anti shape to the metal top and some sort of adhesive in between them. And the idea is that it would be two by six by 12 millimeters. So actually it'll be pretty much the same exact size as this little Norton Ascent. How thick is this thing? Yeah, 12 mm. So it would be shaped like this. I suppose I should have made the uh, the base a little thicker. I, I want it to be cheap. And it'll be damn cheap. If it works. But you pay for the attempt. All right, uh, Leaf River, Illinois. Now we are moving on this little codicil. at an angle of approach relative to its curves, which would put the shape of the effect I'm doing, I don't know, I'm gonna guess somewhere in the 17 to 20 foot diameter area. That's enough of that. I believe we can switch to the mighty Arkansas stone. Hold on. Even though this is 25 foot down the long axis and six and a half foot across, you can clearly see in this video, can't you, how easily the razor is undercutting that oil that I put on there. This is straight ballastol. You know, I would love to put just a drop of water on there. A little bit of water goes a long way with this. I should just put the teeniest bit. That was more than a drop. Oh well. Oh, that mosquito, he's coming around. Come on, come get some. Come get some. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you, little brat bastard. Get out. Oh, he likes the ballast all good. You know what it is? It's a gnat, not a mosquito. Oh, maybe I could get him. He's right there. Damn, did I get him? I did! Meet your maker, little bitch! Okay, sorry about that, guys. Here we go.
you don't want to stay on this part long because what you are doing, technically speaking, is thickening the angle of the tip of the razor. But I, I also want to make sure that the razor edge is not too frayed. You know, I personally don't mind if it's a little bit frayed and toothy to get it to be a little bit thinner. I know you, a lot of you look at the edge in a microscope and you want to see something prettier looking with less cuts in it. So that's what this stone is doing. But you are trading geometry to do that. All right, that's all we need to do for that part. Now we're going to strop the razor. I'll be right back. Well, there you have it, Leaf River. Enjoy and good health. Thank you all for watching, and I look forward to the next time we meet each other, when I will perhaps shave with a straight razor. Bye-bye.